what to call this game now. Oh, I mean, I know this is Stanley Parable, and Panda is playing. Killer. What? I'm terrified. <laughs> Why are you terrified? Yield. Yes, we still have the ghost app. It says it, yield. It is still going. Okay, I gotta learn controls and stuff. Alright, so, uh, you're walking with mouse and I think WASD, WASD. Okay. Begin the game. Begin. Feed them. Later. <laughs> Feed them who? I already fed you. It's zero frames per second because there's no frame framework going on. Ugh. If you start moving the mouse, it'll start. It'll pick up frame. Might. It might not because it doesn't show the mouse right now, for the game. One frame per second. You'll take it forever. It's okay. I'm gonna cry. It's loading. Look, my beard's growing. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Oh, so Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. said until until what until dawn no oh, where am i supposed to go this door you went open. backwards no, you did close that whoa you went backwards you turned around <sighs> yes truly a room worth admiring it had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, Where's drinking it all in. Screw you guys. You might have to speak up a little bit. 
so people can hear but you. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yet, there was not a single person here I'm either. <laughs> Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find I an answer there. That. Change it back! to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, okay, eight, eight, four, two, five. Three, but of course, five. Stanley couldn't possibly oh, have known right. this. It said Kaylee. Um, K A Y L E E. Yep, yeah, that's, that's not my name, but it's close. Uh, it's close. Where is this? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, trying to input you know what, anything dude? on the device was useless, since he could never I possibly tried. know that the combination was You're two, eight, helping. four, five. Three, one, two, three, four. Two, eight, four. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was two, eight, four, five, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, forgot. But it turns ah, out that the panel's that. emergency <laughs> override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Insulation. That that itchy crap. That's weird. Oh. Where? Okay, okay. Ships going through the sky. Little lights. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read uh, Mind Control Facility. Looks promising. Alright. <laughs> the lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Probably not. Oh my god, it's dark in 
bet you can be better. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true well, nature is revealed. Each bore the Probably number me. of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And oh, Stanley, my friend, my friend. one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yep, there we go. Wow, Mario was depressing. Okay. It said blind. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. chill of uncertainty was it over probably not that was his insects itchy, itchy. yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments Free. away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Can you open faster? Had his nope. I want to get out. Gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What you other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would you anyone not go tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No, no, you can. Whatever you life he lives, do. it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the Rewind. only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Goodbye! It's, it won't let me go. <gasps> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. We care about them. And Stanley was happy. Well, you uh, just reached an ending. You beat the game. <laughs> Smarticle. Beat that. Beat the game. Why does it do that? Almost here. Almost here. Excuse me, what? Are you opening a portal? Is Satan coming? What the frick? You just realize your boss has been mind controlling you. But you still go back to work. All of his co-workers were gone. 
What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let it bowl up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other co workers. Resent co workers. Look, I'm not supporting you more. Make sure your slide, slide pad is off. Pick up your header and throw some bevel. Okay, whatever. What is this? Mike James, you are fired. We have our new product. Graphs about things and money. <laughs> things, money, more money, things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs, graphs about things and money. <laughs> what yeah. is hot? Profits, profits, profits. Jeez. Stripes. <laughs> Colored in segment. The stock market is somewhere here. Target demographic teenagers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never actually looked at these. I can't read that. I want to see what the crossed out one is. But I think that's we need a more slash idea. less reviews, and it's. Bug just flew in my ear. Probably a bit. Probably a moth. I just had a heart attack. Object. Object in the air, maybe. Oh, oh, shit. Hunter. What? And then object. Almost there, Hunter. <laughs> okay. Broom closet. What's in here? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Here. I feel like it is. There was nothing here. Yeah, no choice room. to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Why are you poking me? <laughs> because why not? <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No. I'm going down. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed okay. everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. What? All of my co-workers blinking <laughs> mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for what? no reason at all. <laughs> None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet what? when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. Uh, I'm dreaming! Uh, yeah. hey, 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 this hey, hey, is hey. all a dream. Oh, <laughs> what a relief <laughs> Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Okay. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. 
One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Just listen. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. What? Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Is Satan caressing Let my me body? go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am oh, I normal. <laughs> Everything will be fine. I am okay. No. No, I am not. I'm dreaming of stars and shit. I keep going in circles. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Okay. Apparently I was mooned by Mr. Poker. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place Whoa. of work. But on this Is particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body Wake of a up, man who had you. stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, God, for just a few brief moments, <laughs> she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. <laughs> And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Let me just eat this cabbage. It's calming. Very much so. <laughs> he sounds just like my creator. <laughs> I miss him. Point. <laughs> Jammed each other with the <laughs> oh. oh, we might have to take a break from this. We're getting at the at the minute mark. Okay. Alright, well. Oh god. <laughs> I wasn't even paying too much of the game. I was watching your facial expressions the whole time. <laughs> oh to post videos of of your facial expressions. They're so great. That's why I said use the camera. Uh, like, no. <laughs> no! You could be pointing at your face. Not mine. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay then. Okay. 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 Maybe the next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Evan? 
I know something named Evan, but I've never told you all. There's some kid I knew in school named Evan. I mean, I knew an Evan too. But, no. Anyway, <sighs> this was the Stanley Parable, and I believe that was two different endings of the Stanley Parable. I think there's 14 different endings. What? Yeah. Oh my god. I think, don't quote me on it, but I think there's 14. So you got 12 more to do next time. Oh god. <laughs> I think we might have to do like two. Well, depending on how long they are, maybe two <laughs> So Yeah. So, hey, seven episodes of the Stanley Parable. I love you. <laughs> Don't let me- What?! <laughs> <laughs> she just knocked her nose right on it. Uh, you could probably hear my boogers now. <laughs> People want to hear your boogers. You can listen really closely. <laughs> All you hear is a little. <laughs> uh, before before we die of laughter, particularly me. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. <laughs> oh, what Hey there, thanks for watching this video. If you liked the video, go ahead and smack the crap out of that subscribe button and leave a like if you like. As well, feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or check out my wacky antics on Instagram. Also, I've started making music, so if you want to check out some music and kick back with some cool tunes, feel free to check out the link below. Thanks again, and I will see you guys next time. Peace!